When Lamborghini realized the iconic Countach was fast approaching its twilight years, the Italian automaker began the arduous task of designing a model that would supersede the Super Wedge. The new Lambo would need to turn heads and buckle knees by exceeding the visual, aural, and dynamic punch that characterized its successor. Fortunately for the nascent Diablo, Chrysler Corporation acquired Lamborghini in 1987 and invested the much-needed financial muscle in getting it through production. The Lamborghini Diablo, Spanish for devil, named after a revered fighting bull, debuted in 1990 with big shoes to fill. Lamborghini had developed a reputation for delivering some of the craziest supercars on the market, and the Diablo epitomized this philosophy, infused with characters, styling, and impressive driving dynamics. But that's not all there is to this iconic 90s sports car. So here are eight reasons why we love the Lamborghini Diablo. Number eight, Marcello Gandini penned the original design. The Lamborghini Countach owes its unique design to Marcello Gandini, and it's no surprise that the design work for its successor landed in its lap. The standout design elements included a steeply raked windshield and a slant front end. However, the Chrysler executives who arrived midway through the initial design phase were unimpressed by his original plans, opting to involve the Chrysler Design Studio. The Chrysler designers smoothened all the sharp corners and edges and improved aerodynamics and cooling. Although the final design had Gandini's innovative styling, he publicly shared his disappointment by selling the original design to Cezetta for the cool Marauder V16T sports car. Number 7. The Signature Lambo Scissors Doors From a platform perspective, the Diablo was an outright enhancement of the Countach. The unchanged underpinnings featured the same space frame chassis, transmission layout, and aluminum body, the only difference being extra length, width, and wheelbase. Despite the alterations made to most of Gandini's plans, Chrysler maintained the signature scissor doors from the original design. The revolutionary Countach was the first production car to feature the scissor door design, reflecting Gandini's genius in innovative design. The trademark upward opening doors allowed the driver to lean out of the hatch to see behind the car while reversing, a rather unorthodox remedy to the Diablo's poor rear visibility. Number 6. The Lamborghini Diablo houses an epic V12 The Diablo inherited a modified version of the V12 engine used in the Countach, still with four valves per cylinder but a notably increased 5.7-liter displacement. In addition, Lamborghini fitted a computer-controlled multi-point fuel injection to boost engine efficiency and improve fuel economy. The epic Bizzarini V12 is mid-mounted on the Diablo to ensure it achieves desirable balance, while the rear-wheel drive system works well to maintain traction around fast corners. Power is sent to the rear wheels through a capable 5-speed manual transmission. Number 5. The cylinder firing order is printed on the engine. A quick peek inside the Diablo's engine bay reveals several numbers printed on top of the V12 engine. These numbers represent the firing order which goes like 1, 7, 4, 10, 2, 8, 6, 12, 3, 9, 5, and 11. Irrespective of the Diablo's variant, this order remains consistent. Why print the firing order? Certainly not to remind a mechanic how the engine works. Besides low-key flexing the actual cylinder order, rather than just a plain V12 badge, the numbers come in handy during the 90s when do-it-yourself was all the rage. Number 4. The first production Lambo to beat the 200 MPH mark When Lamborghini was under the stewardship of Jean-Claude and Patrick Mimran, the mandate was to build sports cars that would surpass the 196 mph top speed. Upon its debut, straight-line performance was a non-issue for the Diablo since the massive V12 produced 485 HP and 428 pound-feet of torque. The Lamborghini Diablo boasted a 4.5-second 0-60 mph and surpassed the initial mandate to achieve a top speed of 202 mph. The Lamborghini became the first production Lambo to beat the 200 mph, a speed marker that Lamborghini maintained across every iteration throughout its production period. Number 3. A WRC winning driver was involved in the Diablo's development. Sandro Munari is a WRC driver's champion, having claimed the title in 1977 at the wheel of the iconic Lancia Stratos HF. Lamborghini tapped on his vast experience with fast-paced cars to put the Diablo through the gears, testing its limits and offering valuable input during the development phase. Unfortunately, the Diablo was born when most modern vehicle electronics had not yet arrived. 
The Diablo first received power steering in 1993, while ABS was not present until 1999. Despite how cool this might seem, it would take a brave-hearted driver and probably some diapers to race a pre-1992 Lamborghini Diablo. Number 2. The Lamborghini Diablo was available in several variants. The Lamborghini Diablo evolved throughout its lifespan, spawning several variants that improved the original model. The Diablo VT, Viscous Traction, debuted in 1993 with upgrades such as an LM002 derived all-wheel drive, brake cooling vents, electronically adjustable dampeners, a new clutch, wider seats and power steering. The Diablo also revived the SV Sports Veloz moniker in 1996. A variant placed below the standard model with two WD, a carbon fiber body, and an adjustable rear spoiler. Further down the line, Lamborghini added the Targa Top VT Roadster in 1996. The GT2 race car derived GT model in 1999 and the Audi influenced VT 6.0 in 2000. Number 1. Lamborghini produced numerous Diablo Special Editions. In 1999, Lamborghini introduced the first Diablo Special Edition, the 135 unit limited production SC30 to commemorate its 30th year as an automaker. A 30 unit limited run VT Roadster Millennium model debuted at the turn of the 21st century in 2000 while 42 units of a VTSE Special Edition surfaced in 2001. The Superfast Diablo also hit the track in different guises, and a few Lamborghini fans got lucky through several Special Edition racer models. These homologation specials include 15 SE30 Jota examples in 1994, three units of the 1995 Jota, two examples of the 1997 GT1 Stradale, 31 examples of the 1996 SVR, 30 GTR examples in 2000, and GT2 models from 2000.